Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Learning the Basics, Played Up, another tutorial. In today's episode, we're going to be touching and in-depthly talking about maps and about seeds and about what all that, what that all means. The first and foremost, when you first start the game, when you are a quite a beginner before you start leveling up, you will have access to two different maps, like two different choices. As well as you'll have, I think you actually start off with steak and then you have a, one locked and then you eventually want to lock everything. And once you hit the, the top level, you'll have four options to choose from at a time and you'll have four options over here. As well as you'll have the two daily and the, the daily and the weekly map. And look at that weekly map for this week. Uh, how could you even play that? Anyway, so the, we're not going to touch on food this episode, we're going to talk about maps. So if we look at the four maps that I have now, that's actually a pretty large map for just spawning in naturally. You have your country map a little bit different. And then the, the Alpine country city, that's just what the decorations outside look like. Um, like you have your country and your Alpine ones, some of them will get rain or snow in the evening, some of them will just have rain. Uh, and then, but each one has its own little thing and city will have different lights and country will have a different, you know, flowers around the outside of the building. It's all cosmetic. It doesn't have anything to do with necessarily with the gameplay itself. Uh, as far as the titles of this, you have Alpine, country, city, and there might be another one as well. But the point of this video is to go over maps and how do you re-roll a map? How do you choose a map? Why do you want to choose a certain one? Well... Let's start here. I would never choose that map because it's so the, the doors are everywhere. The counters are everywhere. This one's not bad for a small map, but it's still a very small entryway. Again, same with this one. This one would be my, of these four, this would be my choice. But as you see, you can kind of see where my mouse is here. It only has two tile windows or, or passers, and you have one here as well. So it's not the best one to have. Because you need to have the space, right? That, that's the problem. You need to have pass-throughs to serve people through or to have people that to take the food that you're going to then serve to the diners if you're playing on it more than two players. The daily map here is almost similar to the one we had in the bottom there, and this weekly is crazy. Now, before we go into seed runs, I want to talk to you about how, how do you, you may say, well, how do I change these? Do I exit the game? No, 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 no. A much simpler way. You go over to this tutorial and you O on it or whatever your interact button is for using a controller, obviously it's different. You go in here and you think, well, I have to do this. No, you go in, you immediately hit escape. You go down to leave tutorial and that will reset your maps. Granted, that also will reset your dishes at the bottom as a bonus. You can't do one with the other. So now see we have four different dishes here. Um, that's how you also reset the dishes just as a FYI there. But if you look to see what we have here, that one's not really that good. That one's not that good. This is a diner style map, and so is this one. Uh, both of these are pretty much the same, except actually these look to be exactly the same. Interesting that you get two that are exactly the same. Um, playing solo, I like going for the diner style or the all counter window pass through now the way you can determine that is you see the bright white blocks those indicate a pass through or what we call a window the door represents the doors obviously and then here the darker shades represent the wall so here you only have two window pass throughs here you have all here you have all these are the same maps by the way this one here you have a door on the one side and you have a door on the other side and you have multiple pass throughs but again they're on opposite sides so still not the best Let's reroll one more time. And early on, before you have access to the seated runs, depending on what level you are, this is the only way to refresh the maps. You go into tutorial mode, you go in there, you, you exit immediately, it refreshes them as well as the dishes. As I say, let's see what we have now. That one's a little small. That one's small. This one's again, you're going to get a diner map, and then here you have a crazy looking one. So none of these are, are particularly good. And we did, what, the tutorial, what, two, three times? I mean, you could run through that 10, 15, 20 times to try to find a map that you think will fit. And again, the larger the amount of group of people that you play with, the larger the map that you need. It'd be very hard to run four people, a four-player game, or even a three-player game in a kitchen of this size or a map of this size. It's just way too small. You'll be running into each other. You'll have no place to prep things. 
Um, this one's a bit bigger, but the kitchens are a bit oddly shaped. Yeah. And one one token of information here is what you would look at here. Actually, let's look at this one. So to here, you're like, well, the right-hand side is where the kitchen would be. The left-hand side is the dining room. Well, no. You could serve food on the left-hand side. As long as there's access to the back part where the people would sit, which there's two doors, you could serve in that side of the restaurant. There is no, there are no rules here. You could serve in that little room if you wanted to. You could serve in the L at the top. You could serve at the L in the bottom. There's, there's no rule on where you, you set up. I know when you spawn in on day one, it's going to give you a preferred area where to set up based on where the appliances are. But the good thing about this game is you can move them to wherever you want. Now, so when you pick a map that you want, obviously you pick it and you put it on the floor plan. You pick your dish just as I've described one of my earlier uh, learning the basics videos. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, the daily map and the weekly map. The daily map gives you a seed number or a seed combination of numbers and letters. That means when you play this run, you will get the same exact cards as long as you're playing the same exact. If you want to do salad and you do salad two, three, four times, you're going to get the same exact cards, your customer cards or food cards on the appropriate days of three, six, nine, twelve, and then of course once you get to fifteen and above. And that's good if you're trying to do like a speed run, which speed running is in the game. That uses the live split, which we can talk about in another video once we start talking about speed running. Here is the weekly. Which I don't know why you would even play this one to be honest with you. Some weeklies are good and doesn't have to, the size is irrelevant. This is considered a giant map because of how big it is. But it's really not feasible to use unless you unless you serve that big area in the front where the door is going outside. Unless you'd serve there and cook there. Otherwise, I don't know how it would be personally useful. Now, we want to get into the seated run. And a seated run works the same way as this. If you put in, you can put in any, you can just type random letters and you hit enter. And it'll give you a seed. Look at that one. Not terrible, honest with you. You could type in words like words. Not, that's actually not, that's a giant map as well. Not terrible either. You could serve everybody inside that big room. But look at those, look at that walkway around the outside. That's crazy looking. You could type in just words like flower. Up to, I think it has up to eight letters. That just gives you a random map. You can have up to eight letters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Characters, eight characters. That's what the one, two, three, four, six, look at that one. Not terrible either, except the kitchen's a bit wonky looking. Now, if you find online, if you go to the Plate Up Discord, there are seeds that people post. Now, one thing with that, they are a bit bugged as far as when they reset. In theory, this city map should reset every day at your local 12 a.m. Some seeds don't reset that way. Some, for some people, they do. Others, for others, they do. So that's just a warning when, you're, when I'm going to give you some seeds here of ones that I know about. They may actually end up being different for you. That's not a, 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 an issue on my end. It's just how the bugginess of how map seeds are as of 1.0.4. But a couple of runs that I like or that I have had played, I've done Divine. I don't remember if Divine is still worthy of useful. It is. See, there you have a very, very large kitchen and you have four pass-throughs in two sections of one wall. So you could easily put six tables there, four to four or five tables there, no problem to serve diner style. Your dining room itself is a bit kind of awkwardly shaped, but you could easily fit a bunch of tables in for someone serving like that. This is what we consider a large map as well. Another one is meat. Meat used to be a good one. And guess what? It still is for us. For me, I should say. You have your door and you're in a pass-through at the top and you have two pass-throughs at the bottom and you have two little wall pieces in the middle. This is a great one to have a washing station at the top, for instance, and have a serving window at the bottom. Huge dining room could fit lots of decorations, lots of tables, lots of dining room tables. And you have a decent sized kitchen and even have a little, what you could call a research room or decoration room there as well. You have other ones that I've played. One, Herring used to be one. Herring is a good map as well because it has three window pass-throughs, doors to access the back of it, a decent sized kitchen and a nice rectangular dining room. And this would be a large map. Currently, there's no way to tell how many seats are going to be in a room or how many tables or how many counters you get with each seed. That's not currently in the game. Uh, it may be added another time. Almost like you'd hover over this. It would say three tables, ten countertops, and that's how many you start with. But currently, you don't have that. 
Another one that I've played with before is Payday. Some of these I haven't checked in a while, so maybe they not be any good. This one's good because it has an L-shaped serving window area. So you could have tables around that L. You could have a server outside. You could do dishes at the bottom. You need a decent size kitchen as well. This would be considered almost like a medium to large uh, medium si size map. Then you have a call. I'm going to go through a couple other ones. Let's see. I have Payday Meat. Uh, this used to be a good one. I don't know if it still is right now. Let's just check it. And I can just show you that sometimes seeds don't pan out. So that what I typed in there was a seed I used weeks ago. And as you can see, that seed has been changed. So the point I'm getting at with seeded runs, you could just type in anything you want. And look at that. You may end up with something good. That's not bad for a small map. Not bad at all. You have your door right there, a door right to the outside, a research room or a decoration room, a couple passers. Is it, that's a good solo map or even a duo map to start out with is learning the basics where you don't need tons of space. So that's the basics of maps and seeded maps. The only other questions would be is, well, which is the right one to choose? Well, <laughs> there, there is no right way or wrong way to choose a map. It's a map, <clears throat> excuse me, that fits your play style. If you're playing solo, typically you'll go with a map like this where you're cooking on the right-hand side, you're serving on the left through the pass-throughs, through the windows that are the big white blocks. If you're playing with more people, you'd have to go with a larger map. Let's go back to the, is it the meat map? Let's see. Go back to one like this. <laughs> this could be easily suitable to for two, three, or four players. Typically, when you're playing with four people, you have two people serving or one person serving, one person doing dishes, one person, you know, the combination doing desserts, etc. And then usually you have two people in the kitchen, one person being the main cook, the other person being like a sous chef or someone that's doing dishes as well or someone that maybe is working on doing the starters and the sides. So it's very much gives you a lot of space for that for four people. But then again, two people could run a map like this. You could serve diner style in this, this map style here, or you could serve outside. So it really depends. The larger the map, the more tables you get. It doesn't necessarily mean the more countertops you get. Because when you do diner maps, you're gonna get a lot more counters than you're gonna get when you're using a map like this. It's just the way that it works. I don't know why, it just, it just does. But uh, nonetheless, you could play through them. And what I, what I would suggest doing myself, or for you guys, is you go into the tutorial and you reroll a bunch of maps. If you find one that you like, you figure out what seed it is and you write it down. Or you just type in random stuff. Let's see, play it up. That gives us a diner map today. This one here is plate down. That gives us, that's actually not terrible. That's a, that's a, that's a large map as well. But quite interesting, isn't it? And then you have some crazy ones like this. There would be a giant map. And uh, I don't know how you'd even play that. This could actually be a giant map as well. But anyway, that's the basics of running seeds. When you do a seed to run, you're seeding for the map. If you play it again, you will get the same cards as long as you choose the same dish. If you choose a different dish, well, obviously you'll get different cards because you can't get um, olives and, and onions for hot dogs, nor can you get... Um, ketchup and mustard for pizza as far as getting your customer your, your food and customer cards so that's the that's the uh, roundabout way of explaining how this works it's pretty straightforward prior to release seeded runs didn't really exist so you had to go into the tutorial mode every single time to keep re-rolling maps but once you find a couple that you personally like that keep from day to day to day you usually try to play those because you know the layout, you know how many tables you're going to get, and, and you can develop your own style for playing when you find a good map to play on. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. If there's any questions about maps or map seeds or anything that I explained in this video, please leave a comment below, or you could find me on the Played Up Discord at the Ontario Gardener, and you could find my, my Discord as well if you want to um, send me a personal message or a message within the Played Up Discord. Feel free to tag me. Um, and then I'll get that, uh, I'll get that notification. Thank you guys so much and stay tuned for the next back to basics learning played up tutorial. Take care now.